Hello, I am uh, Deepak Jain. I am uh, working as an RA under Patak sir. I am also an M Tech student, just now finished my second year. So, I am going to give a talk on uh, PHP. Yes. PHP is a server side scripting language. The server side scripting language is the scripts are executed on the server and uh, it is the HTML is outputted to your system. It is what, what it is different from uh, how it is different from JavaScript is that JavaScript every operations ha happen on your uh, client system. So whatever logics are sent to the client and the on the client scripts are happening. If you are clicking a button and it is doing some operation, it is happening on the client. But for PHP, uh, those scripts if say. Uh, every PHP scripts uh, end with an extension PHP. So, if you open a PHP file that is executed on the server and the HTMLs are outputted to your client system. So, the syntax are uh, mostly borrowed from C language. Uh, in case of classes in PHP, it is borrowed from Java and some of Perl languages. So, if you know C, it is not at all easy to understand PHP. And it has several inbuilt functions and like uh, floor seal, which you might have used in C. So it won't it won't be easy uh, difficult at all. So uh, I'll just cover a little bit on in, uh, installation. If if you have to install PHP, the Apache server, and uh, MySQL in case if you want to connect to a MySQL. So uh, it is the combined package is called the LAMP server. It is called Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. You can install the LAMP server combined. It is so much easier than installing one by one. But you can install like this also. sudo apt-get install Apache 2. It will install Apache and PHP can be installed separately like this. Once you install restart it, any changes you make to PHP configuration file, you have to restart Apache so that the configuration will take some effect. Now I will come to the syntax of PHP. Every PHP statements start with this start with this uh, uh, PHP and your statements and question mark and uh, closing this one brackets. So uh, you can actually avoid this PHP here also, but it is not advised to use it. It, it might work on some systems, but it might not work on every system. So p this PHP is the must for uh, uh, ensuring that it works on every system. So it, the comments which you write on PHP has the same as C language comments. It has for a single line comment you can use double, uh, double uh, slash and for multi line comments you can use uh, same as C everything this is same as C and every statement ends with a semicolon same as C. Uh, if you miss a semicolon uh, what you what happens is you will get something called as uh, white screen of death some people call it. Uh, so you miss something. You will write some ten statements, and you miss miss out a semicolon in one. It won't display uh, display in any errors. This is because uh, uh, by default, PH, uh, the PHP is set for uh, development server. So on the development server, errors are normally turned off. So if you want, for example, you write a C program, you make some syntax mistake, it displays the errors. But in PHP, by default, it is a developer server settings. So you won't get an errors and you simply get a white screen. It's called white screen of death or whatever. So uh, you have to t uh, turn on the errors first of all to uh, check on, check on PHP errors. That I will uh, show you later. Normally, P um, this errors many people doesn't use beginners, but if you use if you try to use errors, it will be very helpful for uh, uh, when you are working with a big uh, big file P big. Uh, like big website file, you want uh, if when you start a big website, when you start running, then if it it might give any kind of errors, and you won't uh, you won't solve it unless you have this error. Uh, you can turn it on errors and solve that. I will cover that later. So once it Apache is installed, you can check check like this. If Apache server is uh, run run on your system, then you can type localhost. And it shows this. It works. Uh, this page is fetched from this link, this location. 
if you go to the root directory of your Linux system, if you go to your var folder and www dot folder, there is an index dot html. This page is fetched and that page is shown here. So, you can edit it whatever you want. This page is I have to open in a write mode actually this is a permission is denied for this page. This is the page which is fetched when you first install a PHP file and it fetches from this location. So, any PHP you want to test or any HTML file you want to test, just put on this, uh, put your files on this location and you can start testing. From now on, I am going to uh, test my, uh, my files from this location, PHP. So, what all files I put, I will access through localhost and PHP and I will access from here. So, this is how you test, we will test a demo program, first dot php, sorry, You can just echo anything. Uh, this echo is a very good command. You will be using mostly this command. You, uh, if you are not using that error detecting methods, you probably test your codes for error basically using this method only. You just simply echo it and you will see where it stops execution. So, either you can, so this echo is a very, you will be using this a lot. It What it does is it just simply prints the whatever you write. So, I open the file and PHP file it executes this. So, you want to check your versions, version number uh, of your PHP, you can use this function. PHP info, this is a function which instead of echo, I am putting this function. It displays which version PHP 5, your system detail, some server variables. This, this variables you will be uh, using in your program frequently, so your server address. For example, right now mine is a local host. So, local host either it is local host or 127.0.0.1. So, in many situations you need to check your IP of your system, then you will use these kind, these variables. I am running this PHP on my system. So, this is my local host address. If you are running on this PHP on a remote system, these variables will be changed to the IP of your remote system. You can access remote system IP address through this variables. I, I will tell you how to access these variables later and variable initiali initialization. So, in C you will be declaring variables. Here, uh, here you do not need to specify int or float or any specifiers for that. You, you just if you want an integer variable use it like this var 5 or 5.3 variable 1 that is variable 1, variable 2. You can use it when, when you write for example, 5 plus uh, var 1 plus var 2, variable 1 plus variable 2, yeah, the, the program determines whether it is int or uh, float and it, it takes care of it. So, you do not have to specify it is float or int. So, this is similar to C, C style all operations, integer float. Every variable starts uh, uh, starts with this dollar symbol. So, if you want, if you want, if you want to ac uh, assign some value to it, 
you put a dollar then the variable name variable name has the same syntax as c syntax so start with uh, underscore or uh, your yeah, variable name say for example apple whatever apple and i can access uh, if i want to assign a string to it i can put like this i don't have to specify either, either it is a string or like that i can put numbers into orange is equal to 6 so i simply can put like this so uh, one if i want to concatenate these two so some frequent operations which you use are concatenation i will show how concatenation can be done um, i will put a third variable and uh, concatenate both i want uh, first i will make this a string so you want uh, and it is equal sorry there is a error here sorry I, i have not closed the semicolon so i have turned on errors that uh, that's why i can get errors so it shows at line 10 i have not specified dot so so uh, if you have if you have to combine i have missed out the dot apple is a fruit and orange is a fruit this is a combined string i'll probably set next uh, most frequent uh, not most frequent you will be using string to lower string upper this all uh, are mostly similar to c a function if you want to convert a string you pass it to a function inbuilt function string str to lower is a function string str to upper is a function you input the string you will get this so if statement is similar if a condition statements else this c c, c type syntax i will ex, uh, i will in the end i will make a real world some, some small application where i test all this if else while and everything so um, arrays in uh, arrays in php arrays uh, you can like normal c style arrays you can use uh, one of the specialty here is uh, you can in c only index indexed uh, arrays are indexed only by numbers you can use uh, names as the index for example this is c type c style array of 0 so 0th index has php and first index has java this is the second type uh, this is the type which php has one extra you, you can index an array using a string so for example i am index the array this is my array name and this is not a normal uh, integer index it is a string index on this so normally in normal integer index zero and integers are the key here the strings are the key so in this key php i have stored some some numbers so if i have to access i can access similarly array of zero it will have the value of php in case the string in this array of string i can have so this is the one advantage of uh, php arrays this is normal c c, c uh, type of array declaration and using the values 
there is one more type you can use in uh, PHP supports like this. Ar uh, so, this is the array variable and for this, this is like you have to read like uh, form an array and at this location store this, at this location store this and form an array and this is also the similar to this type. So, two types of array methods you can use. So, this is also the same form an array of with PHP as the key and has the value 5, Java as the key has the value 1.6. Next, I will talk about forms. Forms are one of the most uh, import, uh, widely used things which you do in normal PHP. I will create this. You might have uh, used forms, HTML forms. So, what I am going to uh, do is that, um, so what I am going to do is that, I am going to create an input form. form. It will have values to enter, so for example, name this age, your age or whatever, these are all text boxes, buttons and you, when you, there is a button called submit. So, when you press this submit, it is sent back to uh, uh, that PHP engine and it process this and it feedbacks say you a new page. So, this is an example. So, uh, this 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 form this will so there are two files first there is a form it can be either html or php that doesn't matter the processing form here it is going to be a php only this uh, i'm going to post this data to this form and this form process whatever data you have entered and it displays a new page and this page displays you a welcome say for example you have entered the puck and it this page returns you welcome the puck like that so i will start with this a form small form creation and i will slowly move on to sessions and cookies because uh, if uh, what's that okay i'll talk about sessions later first i will do this so this is my form.html I am going to create two files, one is the form.html, it can be PHP also, since I am telling about PHP, I will create as PHP and a receive.php. This form.php has the HTML elements which will post data to this receive, this receive.php and this uh, processes it and gets back the data to the user required. So, this form.php, uh, one specialty with PHP is uh, uh, you can embed HTML, PHP in between, uh, in between itself like you have you can embed PHP inside HTML, HTML inside PHP. So, uh, I will this is one style for example, there is a HTML say HTML, I should have explained this earlier. HTML and there is something body. This is normal sy syntax for HTML. So, uh, uh, this HTML will work on PHP because uh, uh, this same with PHP code does not work with, with work with HTML extension, but HTML, every HTML as you type no, as a normal HTML, it work with a PHP extension. So, this I will execute, there is only one header. Form.php, forms example. So, if I want to put an in between uh, PHP script inside this HTML, so I, all I have to simply do is start a PHP syntax. Every time close it, so you will have this, then echo which you uh, prints to the screen. So, you can insert some say, say a HTML element inside this itself, input type is equal to, now before that I will just echo a small thing.
so this this will come here this is php inside html sorry it's outside inside okay so so this is one type uh, so inside this php i can put html also for example this is a php code and i am going to put html elements in this um, say an input box you normally create input box by i will create this here so that you will first have a look at this input this this is how you will create a html element input type is equal to text some name if you want because if you want to submit some data there should be a name to access it db this is how you create input input text box in uh, html so you can input the same code from a php also so what's the problem here uh, there is there are the problem with codes i have started with the uh, i have started with the code and there is one more code inside so one way to solve this problem is you can escape the codes which needed like this i will tell the other way later so now the input box is inside the php code and i am opening the page again this is your text box so one more way to solve that co coding problem is code problem is whatever you can keep this as such and use single quote for this sorry this is not single quote so in this in this format you don't need to escape this i will say probably put one more name so you have two text boxes so this is ph php inside html html again inside php so let's i am going to remove this if i we want we'll use this so i'm going to create a input box name called name so there is only one box called name and i am going to create a submit button so this submit uh, right now i am going to rest refrain uh, restrict only with one data i am going to just submit the data of this one to a some other form so i am going to create a submit button so if i enter something here if i click it it will submit but where to submit actually we have not created a form so you have to enclose these data to a form so that you can submit that so you have the buttons but where to submit this for that you have to create constructs so so these are the these are the two elements enclose them with a form form now it can be submitted but where to submit we still have not specified this that is that is specified by this action i am saying receive submit to this page which is specified by this action receive.php submit this two elements and which methods to use there are two methods you can use get or post and uh, the method difference i will tell later uh, I, right now i am just using method is equal to get okay now the data are there i'm deepak so what happened here so sorry i i have i have entered the data i have clicked it 
see right now it is form.php, I have clicked it, it went to receive.php with a question mark, tb name is equal to Deepak. So, this is that action, sum, this is the submit, it has submitted, but there is no, uh, this receive.php is there, but it does does not know what to do with the data, because we are not coded it. So, right now it is a blank page. Now, we have to code that receive.php to accept this data debug and process and give back new data. So, the method difference between get, for example, if I use this post here, these are the two difference, post here. If I submit it, you won't see that data. So, uh, the exact difference why you are not getting this, I will again tell later. Now, we will ready the receive.php to accept this data posted. Again, this should be a PHP code to process. So, uh, this this name is the important thing. So, I am going to access in receive.php this input text by this name, tb name. So, I have to access that variable. To access post met, post variables or get variables, you have to use this get of tb name. tb name was the name of that text box. You get data from that tb name and, sto and store it into some variable uh, my name or username. St get from that data get and store it into that variable. So, the, this this is called associative array. So, you will be using this, you will be seeing similar kind of uh, syntax uh, more often. Instead of get there will be post, instead of po this just this variable, just this will be replaced by session, cookie, everything uses the same syntax. So, server this so just changing this name just look at this syntax this will be used very often so instead of get there you can use post here or server variables all are accessed using the similar kind of syntax now i i have stored that variable now i'm going to display it again back So, I have I have got that variable and I am just storing it and using that to print hello username welcome. So, this is the page. Ah, one more thing, uh, I have used get method, I have changed it to post, I, I should use get only. If I have to use get here, if, if I use post here, then I should use post here. I am, I have used get. So, I have changed it. So, now again, whatever. Uh, now, I have posted, uh, I have typed it and I am posting this data. Um, TB name. There is an error. So, you got this T B name is equal to Jayant. So, this 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 is obtained here and this is posted here. You can post anything, you, you can I am posting this. Hello, welcome. This is a string from PHP, this page. So, uh, in PHP, uh, if you want to uh, have a, uh, what to say, a new line, then you have to input the break, line break in along with the string, because it just keeps on uh, putting strings to the server, 
server then th th what you get is a html here so in html what happens if you don't put a break unless you put a break whatever strings are there it is just simply displayed so you have to put a break if you want a new line so we have this so this is normal forms i hope everyone understood forms any doubts in forms How the uh, which one? When you write echo command in PHP, hmm. how does the converted HTML look like? HTML. Uh, Received.php I have an echo. Okay. And then, uh, the, is it converted to HTML by the server? Ah, yes. So, how does it look like? Can you look at the source of the file? Which one? For, there are two files. Which source? No, no, in, the, in the browser. Okay, source. So actually, I am not following that uh, HTML. Uh, you have to follow standard uh, when you are displaying. You have to put HTML that this and all. So uh, actually, uh, your browser normally uh, renders it, but it you should not. You should always use HTML and headers and all for a normal HTML. Right now, it is just nothing. Your browser displays it. If you see the source code, it is just hello break. Even if you are writing a normal HTML and uh, without that HTML syntax body, it will work. Your browser may, some browser might work, some browser does not work. So, uh, so now that it is implied that uh, you have posted get, uh, posted the name Karthik. So, you do not have the form, for get method, this is the thing. You do not even need the form, you just simply can give like this and hello Karthik, it, it takes. So, what happens is that get method is anything follows this question mark and anything follows this or it is implied that it is a get method. So, uh, if I use post method I cannot do this. If I use post method here, post then I have to receive here through post. There are no URL parameters. This is the difference between get and post. So, the the logic of using get and post, you have to uh, so sometimes for testing you for testing forms, you normally use get method. So you can test what all you are passing. But for uh, you don't want to see sometimes you don't want to see what all parameters the user has po posted to the form to the user himself. So at that time you use post. So, you, you want the user to look uh, say uh, okay, what all parameters he has passed then use the get method. But normally security forms you just do not want you just simply use post method only you do not want the user to himself to see what he has posted. So, uh, for example, I am using instead of tb name I am creating a name for example, new variable new variable is equal to. Um, So, I am using this. So, what will happen? Any guesses? There, there is no variable, uh, say I will execute this undefined index tb name. So, it is the receive.php is expecting the variable called tb name from the get method or post method. Sorry, I have to use get here previously also. It is uh, expecting a get variable but your uh, get variable of name tb name but what you have passed is new variable so what you can do is if i change to new var then probably this url will work you don't need a form hello pratik welcome so it processes this so this new var is this uh, new var so for post method this won't work because you can't use a url there uh, you can't get through url you can you have to use some other javascript method but it it will be covered it won't be covered in this session next uh, we
before sessions i will tell about include and uh, include and what is the next one require two two functions so what it does is in a php i will say there is a, a small site for example this is my uh, and this is a company site uh, just some demo data just don't care about so there is a small page uh, hello world welcome to our website uh, we provide services blah 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 whatever so uh, there is a index page of this company server and it has two links so wh wh what will be a small demo company page will look like it it will have an index page and it will refer to uh, some links so that is how it is a simple small simple page it is a starting page and it has links to say about page contact page so for that i have two pages about page and we have established in the year 1995 and there is a page about page and there is a contact page so two pages this is the main page so i am opening the index page so hello world welcome to our website this is the company's main page or our demo company's main page so there are two links about us contact us so if i click about us that about us page uh, has this data we have established so it is displaying uh, you you all know i think you all know about href this I, it is just a link href a href about our php about us and contact us so i have this contact us page and it displays you can contact company abc number etc such so uh, what is the advent uh, i am going to talk about require and uh, include so uh, in normally in company website uh, if you or any website in general you see uh, uh, a header a common theme for all pages which you are displaying and a small footer which is a common theme for all pages so uh, what does include a include what it does is if you have you can write a php uh, if i write include include is a function and it includes a php file um, include say i'll say i will create a file called header so this header is going to be my theme of my web theme or right now i'm not going to show about H css or javascript this 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 header dot php will be repeating on all pages so uh, this is say a company called uh, selling bicycles or whatever h1 called a1 bicycles okay. so this a1 bicycles i want this page to be repeated on all pages so what i will i can simply do is include that header or php at the start of my index page so when i uh, one thing i have not put index dot php here even if i put index dot php or anything just uh, what it does is when you pay, uh, fetch a page from a folder it first looks the server looks for index dot html or index dot php and it fetches so for any page if you want to start the index dot php or index dot html you don't need to specify index dot php that's why my my site it open as such i don't have to specify index dot php okay it is in like that it is index dot php so this a1 bicycles it is uh, fetched from this header dot php to index dot php i want the same thing to about us page as also about us page right now doesn't have anything so what i will simply do i will sorry 
include it is called header php i have included to about uh, the same thing i will copy to contact.php so from in uh, i am now updated so if i access about a, it has a1 dot cycles if i access contact us it also has a1 bicycles now i don't have to copy that same header file again and again to all pages so whatever new page i create i just simply copy the header and put on all pages else what should i do is every time i create a new page i, sh I should copy this this text and put so wh what what is the problem here this is a small text here but in complex website or uh, some big sites it, it is a uh, collection of so much files so you don't want to repeat uh, write writing uh, the entire thing on your uh, every page and make it obscure so so this is the one method so i'm going to write one more string here say so now now i want to update my header i just simply what i do i just edit in my my header page itself so this is the header page i updated just the header page and since it i have not done any changes to index page just updated the header page and all about us page or contact us page as this so uh, even this also i can put on header itself this about us contact us this, even this links i have to i can add to the header itself so for example if you go to about us that link is gone so where is that so this also even you can put in header so it will repeat on every page uh, the, those two links are this i'll create one more link called home home and the link to that is index.php and i copy this three to the header so now i update home about us contact us now all the pages has this three it is a small menu so you can apply styles and you can start creating your own website small website i will change the menu types it's like a menu bar small menu and every pages this is the header so the, it repeats at every page the same header can be done for footer also instead of this header file you create one more php file called footer or what you can keep any name so uh, once you ended here uh, you have to include that for example i include a header file you have to include the footer file also then your main page will have header constant header constant footer everywhere but for footer what's the problem is uh, you, the uh, alignment and uh, what, uh, html white white spaces won't be replaced as such white space if you if you have any syntax here and you display some new element this white space are ignored so if you want to display a footer right at the end you have to do some css works so uh, css styling uh, you have to do that i am not going to cover next i will be talking about sessions so you have sm small uh, small website uh, where you can uh, where you have data about the company now you have to give your uh, information to the company websites for example you have logged into this page and, and you want uh, you want to log in basically you want to log into the think this as a gmail you are, you have opened this and you want to log in to this page and login users can get more details for example i am getting only home about us contact us if you logged in maybe you want uh, you can see more details so i i have to basically provide a mechanism to log in and differentiate between normal user and logged in user and i will show more data for logged in user so for that we can use either sessions or cookies the difference between sessions and cookies is uh, sessions when you open a browser uh, if i uh, what it is if i open a browser and in the php file if i 
started a session, then I can store variables uh, on the website until I close this window. Once I close this window, that session is gone. So, there are something called persistent sessions, that persisting sessions, I will not talk about that. But just think of the, like this, uh, sessions are like you, if you close this, it will, the session variables will be gone. Uh, for example, a uh, shopping cart, a uh, flip cart or online so sh shopping mechanisms. Uh, so, you click, uh, you click the first product and first product, uh, uh, for example, uh, you have clicked some book, Harry Potter book or whatever. So, that book I can store, uh, you, I can sh store into the session variables and I can continue purchasing more, I can continue selecting more, add more items to the cart. So, I can store the, those value size chose to a session variable and store them till I finish my shopping. So, I can use either sessions or cookies. So, cookies is the next mechanism. Cookies is, the difference is that cookies is visible. You can go to your uh, cookies also, it is also storing. I can for the same shopping cart, I can store the variable to the cookie. So, I can, once stored, it will be on your browser for some expiry time. You have to tell when the cookie should expire. That you, you can specify. And if you go to your, if it is Firefox and you can go and clear, sorry, you can go and check the cookies of various websites. Say Google has stored a cookie and called NID and it expires at something. So, it is expired already. So, the, what is this? Thursday, it expires as Thursday, November something, 9.25 am. It has already expired. So, Google will not be needing this cookie anymore. If Maybe it will set one more cookie. So, what I am going to do is, uh, I am going to sh show two methods, one is session, I will, uh, I will uh, make page to log in and store the, your logged in information as a session or a cookie. First I will show as session, maybe I should show as a cookie, cookie is more easier than session. I will make a small backup, my website with say, I, ca I will call it as my website with cookie. Now, I am going to add form elements because this form is only, uh, through this form only I am going to post data, time is 9 to, uh, through form only I am going to post data to the server and I am going to log in. Probably I should copy, okay. Action. So, what to do with the page? Action equal to. Oh, before going to this, any doubt with include, uh, include, okay. Uh, one more thing, include, the next one is called uh, require, the both does the same thing. If I use, instead of include, I, if I use require, it also tries to fetch this page, fetch this page. The difference is that if, uh, if I turn on the errors and if I use include and if the header.php does not exist, uh, it just reports a warning. If you, uh, then it continues executing the next things, uh, but if you use require, uh, it will uh, tell, uh, error, it will report an error and it will fail at that moment. So, this is the difference between include and uh, require. So, So, this is the form, my form is ready for this page. This new site is my site cookies, this site. This is my form, I will write say enter your name, login details for example.
now in details enter your name so now i have to prepare the receive file i have not specified method I am getting that variable get get of uh, db name So I have re received the read it the receive page also. Uh, right now I'll remove this some something. Uh, it is looking so much ugly. I will I will remove some header files. It is looking too much data. I remove the header also. Okay. Index page and this is your login page. And then if I enter. I have not done uh, mechanisms uh, for cookie. I am just showing whatever I have done so far. Submit. Sorry, I have not specified. Hmm? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Thanks. So I am submitting. Uh, it just uh, this place logged in, but I have not actually, I am not storing it anywhere. So, I want to store this data. So, how to store? This is a method set cookie and it has two, three parameters. First is the name, value, value to store. You saw that Google, it has stored a cookie with the name NID and this is going to be the name and I am go going to store a cookie with the username you entered user entered and this value can be anything say I am going to say some special value this will mean little bit later so right now let it be special itself and the expiry time to expiry when this cookie should expire this time is the current time current time plus you have to give the seconds when to expire I will say for example if I give 60 then it will expire in 1 minute if I give 60 into 5 it will expire in 5 minutes I am going to expire make this cookie expire in one minute 60 that is 60 seconds I just can give just 60 or just 60 into 1 it will expire in one minute. So, I am show I am clearing all the cookies just to show that there is no cookies okay, okay, clear. There is no cookies here cookies and submitting this now a cookie is created see the cookie is created for the local host if I am executing this I am showing the values then the cookie name is Jayanth and that content is special this content is the content which Web, uh, web users use for storing some information. So, this content can be anything right now I just entered special cookies content and it expires at uh, 9th May 9th May 12 26 right now ok it is going to expire in 12 26 41. So, we will wait 30 seconds uh, till that I will explain ok there is a cookie and uh, I am using that cookie using set username and the special variable and the expiration time. Mm -hmm. It will expire in say some seconds, few seconds. So, how to use that uh, cookie variable and show that in the main page that I will tell now. I will I 
waiting for the expiration okay it is it should be expired by now expired means the time has passed i can't use this i mean i i should uh, it is it will be there but uh, the it is expired you can't use it like that okay now how to use this cookie to uh, in the main page and display that you have logged in so and so so this is your main page i am show i am checking this there is uh, before starting the main page i am checking that whether a cookie exists or not so uh, like at uh, that time uh, previously i said you this this syntax will be used mostly so the same syntax is will be used i'm just copying so that you will get more understanding of how that variable is not at all changed so cookie so instead of get it is a cookie here the cookie name i have stored using oh sorry i should actually uh, have i should have stored uh, the username to be u name so that i can access there so i have sto stored username and the special variable should be your name so that i can fetch the and sh store so the the username will be the, the content of the cookie and the cookie name will be u name so the now the cookie will be stored with the name u name so that i can access the u name here and display if it is present or not one one function is used to check is if set is set is set of this cookie if this is set if is set of this echo logged in uh, logged in and your name so what it does it finds whether this cookie is present or not and then displays uh, the value present on that so the value present on that is the your username so this is my cookie site and i have entered you are logged in and i'm refreshing the page it shows that logged in deepak so uh if i change the name here jaya so if i refresh this it shows logged in jaya so so how to uh, exp, uh, how to make this logout so i am creating a button called logout so in case of cookies you uh, for it for a making that expire is so simple you just set the time expiry time to a reverse uh, Uh, time before say time minus some few seconds and it will be expired so i'm creating a logout button if sorry a h r f i have made the constraints for logout if i click this i should th i should make this cookie expire so i i will make a page called logout and in this page what i do is i copy the same thing what i did i am going to use the same set cookie only thing i am going to do is i am going to set some reverse time so sometimes earlier than current time so minus say 1 minute so uh, this this in logout logout this this name doesn't matter because you are going to expire the cookie so you don't have to say anything you just save anything nothing so uh, i am setting this cookie so it's already expired what i am setting is so nothing should happen it's already an expired cookie so i have made the provisions 
if I go to main page, logged in Deepak Jain, Deepak, and if I press logout, the logout is done. I have to go to main page. It doesn't fetch us. Now, uh, one thing, uh, instead of uh, going back, I I want to make the user to go back to the main page automatically. So what I can do is, you can use header, header and you can specify a location where to go. So what happens is, when I go log out, it goes to the log out and it, uh, it displays nothing, you have to come back. So you want to automatically redirect, then you can give this, it is as simple as that, just header this. So I will put the same, same thing there also. sorry in receive dot php after setting that i am going to redirect to the main page sorry it is not redirecting ah yeah it's redirected <laughs> so uh, it went to receive page and it set that name to the cookie and it redirected to the main page, index page. So when I log out also, it went to logout.php, it set the cookie with some reverse timing and it redirected to the main page. So this is cookie, so any doubts in cookies? Okay, next will be sessions. So for session, I am going to copy the same thing, the changes are very little. The difference between for sessions are, there are no visible, you cannot see the sessions as such. So the changes I am going to make, a, make are, these are all same, receive, same, same thing, receive.php is there, logout.php is there. I am going to just make the procedure different on that receive page and logout page. So what is the difference between se in sessions is, instead of set cookie, I am going to, uh, there is a construct, you have to start a session for that. So for sessions this is the thing, you have to start the session. So in index dot page itself, I am starting a session. You start a session through this, session start which means that something session is started and you can uh, you can store as many variables to this session as possible and uh, whenever you set the variable you can access till you close the browser you can access those variables so session is started you have to use the session start here also else if you uh, try to set some variable here uh, variable will be set but if you un try to unset there will be problem so you have to use se session start here also now I am going to st uh, set a session variable and in that session variable I am going to store your username, the user username I have entered. So the, the const I, like I said that time this is the same syntax instead of this get method for sessions it is session. So I am going to uh, for sessions, yeah for sessions. Uh, I have I, I will use the start I will create a session variable like this session or the variable will be you name username and what to store in this the name you entered the username entered will be I will put a name where different so that you will there is a difference so the name is the in inputted name and I am going to make a session variable called username and going to store that that thing. So that session variable is set, you, you do not need this one cookie, this also you do not need and this header page will redirect to the index page like the previous one. So on index page instead of this what you have to do, you have to change to session and instead of cookie, session and at logout page. You have to unset here, that is the difference, unset and 
and set that session variable. So, this all the changes. Now, I will go to the session page. So, this is now fetching this, uh, yeah, this page now sets the session, session variable and it redirects to the main page and from the main page it is when it starts again it checks session is on, then it logged in that session name. So, for logout same thing, it is not happening as there is some mistake. Okay, yeah, thanks. So, I am logging out, that is it. So, as I said, the session start is needed on every pages. So, that is all for sessions cookies and uh, any doubts in sessions cookies okay so uh, on thing of when to use sessions and when to use cookies it's uh, some some application demands that uh, some user doesn't want cookies to be stored on the on her, uh, on his browser or her browser so uh, sessions is the will be ideal at that time. So, it is an implementation method which which one to choose. So, just knowing this include session header um, then what else if for loop you can almost do any pages. So, for each uh, for if you want to know about any syntaxes you can use uh, this PHP just search this there is a website. str to upper and this php dot nine manual is sufficient enough to for once you know what you can do with the php and this P, uh, you can use this manual to do uh, to, to you can do anything uh, so you can you can do many things with session cookies headers insert uh, include forms so you can almost it's you can uh, develop many pages so uh, uh, other explanations are not needed I think forms everything or exception one one more thing is files but you, it is easier you can cover files this is a small thing a function to check whether the directory I am not going to implement this it is already 230 uh, is directory and open directory and read those files and display it so you can use many things so I am going to end this session any doubts Now, one problem with this cookie is uh, I am setting this uh, uh, cookie the in the cookie page I am setting cookie from the server uh, one a particular problem we faced is uh, that if server times are different this when when you set the cookie from the server right now my server is my system. So, the when I set the time here the time here time to expire it takes the server time like uh, for example, uh, 1240 at the server it was 1240 1240 plus uh, 41 it is set at the server but when it comes to your client that is client this time may not be client at the time may be different so it may be already expired so we, this is one problem we faced in quiz module we set uh, the time time at from the server and when the when we're, while developing all were in same system so uh, times were not different but when we deployed it server time and everything was different so uh, it when you start a quiz that, that there is a time difference and it just expires after uh, some last 2 3 minutes there is a time difference and there was a bug so uh, so at that time what we did is instead of this we send some script to the so you can send scripts to the uh, client through javascript like through you can actually put send scripts so in the script we set the cookie from the client so that problem was solved so, many problems like this come you can solve it you have to look when to use cookie 
whether you will set variables from the server or client. So, combine JavaScript and PHP you can solve the problem, but where to use either set a client say JavaScript or this will be a problem which you have to by trial and error method you will, will you can detect. So, Java and JavaScript will be taken care later. Uh, so, I am ending this session.